Hey guys, today we are just doing a few things around the garden. Garrett's trying to build an extra run onto the chicken pen and we're going to be dehydrating some food. Come on, let's go, Jack. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Go on. There's not enough room in this aisle for both of us. So as you can see, my cucumbers are going a little wild. So I'm going to go ahead and train them up the trellis so they'll climb up and stay up. Alright, right now it looks like a holy mess, but give this a day or two and the leaves will start to face up and they'll start climbing up a little bit better. And as they reach up to the next string, I'll tie it off again just to keep some support on there because it is already fruiting. You can see there's a bunch of pickles on these vines. Um, and you'll notice that some of the vines are a lot smaller than others, like these. They're not as mature as these over here. And there's some smaller ones down there. That's because I have several different varieties of cucumbers in here. So they're going to grow at all different paces. They're going to be all different sizes. And some are going to be great climbers on their own, like this one. So you can see some are even just little sprouts still. So I'll keep doing updates on these. Garrett's over there extending the chicken run so we can keep the chickens cooped up for a little bit while the tomatoes are ripening because they will get my tomatoes. Look at all the squash flowers blooming in here. Aren't those the, just the most beautiful orange you've ever seen? I love it and there's so many on these plants. Garrett, look. <laughs> you weirdo cat. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi, baby. No, my big boy. <laughs> this is Willow's favorite elm trees. <laughs> she loves it. This is the amaranth. It's so pretty and it did so well this year. I really want to plant a more dense row next year, or a few rows actually. Also, the bean trellis is doing really well. The beans are climbing all the way up, and I think they're actually going to grow into the tree eventually. These are my tomatillos, and these are the green variety. Kohlrabi, so pretty. I'm definitely going to be planting a bunch of kohlrabi this fall. More saucer squash that has popped up. Just planted those last week. And my eggplants are producing like crazy. Zinnias, these are the pink and purple zinnias that I planted about a month ago in this row and I just, I love zinnias and these are so beautiful. This is one of my favorite colors. I love all the pinks and the lilacs together. And these are the pumpkins that Garrett Seed started not long ago. The macaroon gladiolas mix is doing really well. There ended up being a ton of that lilac color that I love. But there's actually still several that haven't bloomed yet, so I'm excited to see what those colors are. 
the sunflowers are all doing really well. I'm actually about to seed start my uh, last batch in the ground. I'm going to direct sow them just like I did these because July 15th is the last day to sow sunflower seeds. The celebrity and beefsteak tomato plants are doing really well, and my Peggy Martin rose is still blooming. It's been blooming for months. This is actually a birdhouse gourd. And now we're back out into the market garden, looking at the zinnia row and some of the cucumbers and squash. Everything is just really thriving out here. The okra is starting to produce. I actually have a row of okra in the back as well. This year we planted about 15 different varieties of tomatoes, so I'm really excited to see these put on some color so I can identify them. There is a fuzzy peach tomato that I'm really excited to see, so I'm hoping that one of those that I started made it in this row, but I'm not sure, so we'll see. The beans are struggling a little bit. I think we've got mosaic virus in one of the rows, and the summer squash is super prolific. I know I already showed these but they are just putting off so much fruit. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all the squash. I think I'm gonna to have to dehydrate most of it. The corn is doing really, really well. Let's hope it uh, grows strong through this heat because we've got some really hot days coming up. The pepper plants that we planted are still taking their time acclimating to the climate out here, but I found this really funky squash. Look at it, there are like three or four of them growing together. The tomato plants love it out here. Oh my gosh, the plants are loaded up with fruit. And my honeysuckle is blooming again for the third time this year so far. So I may have to make some honeysuckle jelly soon. I've been meaning to every time it blooms, but then I forget. This is a pickle, a <laughs> pickling cucumber. And then there's the zinnias again, because we can never have enough zinnia footage. This is either a ground cherry plant or an eggplant. It was labeled ground cherry, but it's looking a lot like eggplants. And then this is some purple horse mint that grows wild on the property. I think it's really pretty. And this is a Rose of Sharon. I have several of these. We're dehydrating yellow pepper tomatoes so we can eat them. So since I'm dehydrating some of these yellow pear tomatoes, I'm also going to seed save them at the same time because I don't really like uh, the tomato seeds in my dry tomatoes. So I scoop them out into a jar and then I'll let them ferment in this jar for a few days to get rid of the gooey membrane that's around the seed. And then I will do a video on how to do all of that. So these tomatoes will only take about four hours to completely dry and you just want to make sure that you dry them all the way through because if there's any moisture at all in them they're going to mold in your jar and I like to store all of my dried fruit in jars. Look at all the seeds we got and there's no water added to this at all. That's just all of the tomato guts that we put in there. I think we did uh, almost seven pounds of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, the yellow pear. Now we've got peaches and apples in this batch and some jackfruit that we got from the Asian market. Um, we bought like a big chunk of jackfruit, so we're trying it out. So this will be tasty. So all those tomatoes made almost two jars of dried tomatoes. <laughs> so that's all you get for four trays of dried tomatoes. Um, but you know what? At least it didn't go to waste. We have a ton of tomatoes and we can rehydrate these to make really delicious sauces, um, like pasta sauce. So what you do is you would uh, rehydrate them by soaking them in water and then chop them up and then you can saute them in a pan with olive oil and garlic and add some heavy cream and some spices and you can make a really, really great sauce with that. And then we got about one jar of dried fruit and this is a mixture of apples and um, peaches and the kids have already ate a bunch of them because I had them like really compressed in here 
and they ate a bunch. And this is probably about, how many peaches would you say we did? Five peaches and one green apple. So I'm definitely gonna do more of these because the kids love them, but they always love dry fruit. So that's what um, a full day of, preserve, of dehydrating got us. It's not really been a full day though. Um, they pretty much, the, the tomatoes took overnight to dry all the way and the apples and the peaches only took about six hours. Now we've got homemade jerky drying. This is gonna be the spicy kind. <laughs> That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.